Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 218, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net or call the voicemail hotline at 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 218th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. I'm Tim Mooney. Thanks so much for joining. I am here working remotely in the uh, Delmarva, Delmarva Peninsula, which is a fancy term for the uh, three-state region that is on the eastern shore of those three states. And um, well, let's just put it this way. I'm kind of enjoying it. It's pretty nice out here, and I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit of cycling and bring that to you as an episode of the Pedal Shift Project later on this month. On this edition, however, we are, we're in for a real treat. Um, it's been a minute since I've done an interview, and I'm really excited to be bringing a few interviews to you in the next few weeks. The first of these is this one right now, right here, uh, number 218 with Aileen Crotty. And we'll be getting in on that in a moment. A little bit of housekeeping, as I have been saying for the last couple of weeks, friend of the show, Annalisa Vandenberg, is the organizer behind the Cycling With Summit that starts next weekend as I'm sitting here uh, releasing this podcast at September 18th through the 20th. And it's a great lineup of speakers, including Pedal Shift friend Jasmine Reese. Go check it out at milesportraits.com slash cycling dash with. I'm really excited for that event. This weekend, in fact, right now, the 18th fa- the 18th annual filmed by bike, it's happening virtually September 10th through the 13th. So if you're if you're downloading this on the drop, it's starting today tonight. I've wanted to check this out for years, as I've been mentioning on the show, but I could never coordinate my Portland travels uh, to check it out or check out any of the road shows. On this episode of the podcast, I'm excited to chat with Filmed by Bike's founder Aileen Crotty. If you're a bikey Portlander at all, or if you're bikey Portland adjacent, you've consumed some of the stuff she's been in on the ground floor of. We're talking the Midnight Mystery Ride. We're talking Palooza, Shift to Bikes, the Kebu Bike Show. So yeah, Aileen's legit. And we're going to chat all about the film festival, including the bike adventure entry in this year's uh, particular edition, plus more about the bike industry, diversity, and much more. Really excited to share this with you. Let's check it out. All right, we are joined by Aileen Crotty from Filmed by Bike. Aileen, welcome to Pedal Shift. Thanks for having me. I am beyond excited because this is going to be the first year that I actually get to participate in Filmed by Bike. I would love for you to kind of play the ambassador here and uh, explain to folks who are listening what Filmed by Bike is and maybe kind of a little bit about the history of it. Yeah, so I started Filmed by Bike in the early 2000s at a time when... There was an eagerness among cyclists to share space with other people who understood their crazy passion for bikes. It wasn't common to ride your bike to work. Bike lanes were pretty rare. Bike gear was hard to find. This is an entirely different landscape. So being able to be in a space with people who understood that passion for bikes was gold. So we started all sorts of what we like to call here in Portland, bike fun. Fun events, opportunities for people to gather, again, share that space, share ideas, share resources, and get to know each other. And Filmed by Bike grew out of that. It was an opportunity to bring some rare movies together, raise funds for some projects we were working on. And that was in 2002 and three, and I've been at it ever since. Here we are 18 years later. That is amazing. I can't believe that it's been 18 years. That's pretty crazy. (laughs) I like to tell people it's like it's like having a kid. You have an 18 year old now. We are three years away from that kid uh, being able to drink, which 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 is an interesting co- co- concept in my head for this uh, festival. Um, uh, this yeah. is you, you. You normally house this festival or at least kick it off in the land of sunshine and bunnies, Portland, Oregon. Uh, listeners know that I have a long time love affair and, and used to live in, in Portland. Um, what do you think the. Uh, the influence is of Portland on the festival, uh, both kind of at the beginning and kind of where it's evolved now. Absolutely. Hands down. Film by Bike would not exist if it weren't for the Portland community supporting us every step of the way. Portland 
is a city where people don't say, oh, that's a that's not a good idea. Don't try it. It's a city where people say, I don't know what's the worst that can happen. Let's give it a try. And it is a city of innovation and creativity. Um, and it's really that innovation, that willingness to try random things and see if they stick and move on if they don't. And that support I got in the early days from the Portland bike community and later from the film community supporting what we've done, you know, our, our beautiful historic Hollywood theater reached out to me and said, we would like to be your theater home. And we shifted to a different theater and, and started running the festival there. And they've been so supportive and really helped take us to the next level. So all along the way, we've had this great support from the Portland community. And while our festival does travel all over the world, Portland is our home and our signature annual film festival is our opportunity to showcase our new collection and really celebrate our local bike community. If you have not been to the Hollywood Theater, one of the places that I want you to go when you go to Portland, because you're going to Portland, gentle listener who has never been, go to the Hollywood Theater. It is, it's a real iconic place and I can't think of a better place to host uh, uh, film film screenings. But this year, unfortunately, we're kind of not doing that. Um, what was, I mean, COVID changed everything from for bike touring, for sure. How did it change how you approach things? Obviously, you're doing it online now, but like kind of what was the, what was sort of the ramp up to all of this? You know, were, were you, were you able to have a little bit of hope in there that you could do it in person for a little while? Or did you kind of quickly realize that this was a bigger thing and you had to kind of shift? How did that, ha how did that work? Oh my gosh, we are all about celebration and being in person together. The, the festival part of our film festival is such a key element. We used to host a street party with a stage and live entertainment. We do all sorts of bike rides and events and filmmaker meetups. So we held on as long as possible. We kept saying maybe in June, maybe in July, maybe in August. Um, but we finally pulled the trigger in July and the writing was on the wall that we needed to move to a virtual event for our signature annual film festival. But before that, we knew right away that when the global pandemic hit, that the bicycle industry was going to be slow to react, that they weren't going to take this opportunity for innovation because they don't take the opportunity for innovation very readily. And we really wanted to be a leader to showcase what could be done to unify the global bike community. We knew that there were cyclists all over the world who were feeling isolated and alone. We're used to hitting the open road with other people. And for many people who may be shy or depressed, getting out on their bike is this really cool opportunity to be around other people without a lot of the social pressures of small talk and this and that, that, that come along with people having social anxiety or just, just that, you know, all that weirdness that comes with being around other people. You just ride your bike next to them and talk about bike gear. It's all so easy. And we knew that when the pandemic hit, that wasn't happening for those people. They were inside they weren't sure if they should be riding they wouldn't weren't sure how they should be riding and they were most certainly likely to be riding alone so we knew that something needed to happen to give a sense of solace and unity to the global bike community to give some entertainment to give them some lighthearted fun at the end of a long weird weird week and so we launched a series of online events not knowing what the heck we were doing we learned live streaming in two weeks we were fully up and running with a nearly two month series of weekly events, interviews, bike movie nights, chats with filmmakers, chats with bike advocates, like the whole gamut. Um, we jumped right in and did that and it was so fun. It was such a great learning experience and we really were just flying by the seat of our pants, but who the heck cared, you know, it was the beginning of quarantine, no, nobody knew how to live life. So they were certainly forgiving of our learning curve with live streaming and YouTube and everything we learned. But all of that really set us up for success that now that we need to shift our festival online, we feel really well prepared to shift to a fully online event. And we are taking it to the full extreme and really exercising how we can use a live streaming platform as an opportunity to connect with our audience. I've been so impressed with how, you know, film by bike and businesses and and social groups and everybody is, has had this incredibly disruptive thing thrown at them and 
everybody has pivoted. Everybody has taken the tools that are available and have done such a good job. I'm just I'm just so impressed with sort of like with all the stuff that is that that I sort of am bemoaning about life in 2020. And there's a lot. I'm, I'm I I have to say the one kind of thing that I take away that's positive is how film by bike and other groups and other things have managed to soldier on and be able to hold their events. I, I, I'm hat hat tip to you because I know what a big de- deal, uh, what a disruptive thing that could be. Well, so. and you know, humans are resilient. We wouldn't still be here to this day facing all the adversity humans faced in the early days of existence, you know, if it weren't for that resilience. And I like to find the resilience and creativity. So how can we not just survive, but how can we thrive and bring creativity and entertainment to people? Because we need joy as much as we need survival. Um, and that's what Film by Bike is really focused on within the bicycle landscape our role is joy entertainment and celebrating creativity i feel like you're a really good person to answer this question because you said something earlier about how that the bike industry is really slow to change i mean glacial is a word i would use that's a good word (laughs) oh man my sat words are, are just off the charts today you know i think that one of the things that 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 I think that the bicy- bicycling writ large, but especially, it, you know, maybe the bike industry, I think diversity is a big has been a big question mark. And I'm curious, like, what have you seen over the course of the 18 years that you've been doing film by bike? Have you seen sort of a shift, a, kind of a more of an emphasis on diversity, not just in the films that you're doing, but just sort of in bicycling writ large um, to to try to get more people on bikes, more access, more representation, things like that? I've seen very little of it, um, pathetically little of it. And what I have seen just seems like grand gestures other than a few really stand out examples. And my favorite these days is Machines for Freedom, the gear company. They make really great apparel for cycling and they've been focused on people of color in larger bodies being just totally the norm, no big deal for a long time. And they really lead with that. They're an awesome company and a really, really really great example of a company just doing it right and doing it authentically. Um, but, but really the industry has done so little and even, you know, we've been pushing and pushing for this for quite a long time. I'm hopeful that the racial justice reckoning is really going to shake people up and let them, you know, really give them that wake up call. In fact, tonight uh, we are going to be interviewing bike advocates from across the country to talk about how the racial justice reckoning has forced them to realize it's time to shift their priorities and their vision, their mission and their program. So I'm really curious to hear from these advocates on, on how that's changing the bike advocacy landscape. And in preparing for that program, I was looking at the leadership roles of bike advocacy organizations all throughout the United States. And it was white people, white people, white people, white people. I mean, I had to dig to find the people of color who are in leadership roles affecting change at these organizations. And there just aren't a lot of people in those roles. And then you look at the industry as a whole, and it's just, if you're not a racer, let's start there. If you're not a racer, you barely get attention. And I can speak about that from experience as a non-racer, getting the attention of the bike industry has been really slow. Here we are 18 years later, and we barely get attention from the bicycle industry. I think that's crazy. I think that's so crazy. I love what we're doing, so I'm totally biased because this is my artistic dream come true and my baby here, this film festival. But I mean, come on, we work with 70 amazing filmmakers from all around the world every year who are telling incredible bicycle stories that are funny and important and emotional. We are providing content that is available and the bicycle industry is still like, who are you again? Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad. That's exactly how I felt, too, that it's sort of like I feel like that there are independent efforts. There's, you know, what you're doing, uh, what what uh, folks that I've had on the show are doing and, and, and others as well, where it's it, it there's trying to expand what the notion of it, of being on a bicycle is and, and bike fun and, and, and things like that. And um, that's why I'm really glad to see efforts like this, but just because um, I, I think that the only way you're going to get more folks who don't look like me <laughs> on a bike, you know, is to highlight them and raise their voices and stuff. So that's why I'm really glad to see the, uh, 
these kinds of the kinds of films that you're bringing and the kinds of efforts that are out there. So yeah, yeah, um, and absolutely. And you know, for the last bunch of years, we we had a really great films manager on our team for years who was pushing for this. Every year we have a brand new jury and they push for it. And we have had a very strong focus on making sure that we were carving out space for prominent roles of prominent celebration, leadership on stage, on screen, on our staff role for black indigenous and all people of color. And the stories are not out there. They're very hard to find, but we dig and we dig and we dig and we bring those movies to the screen as best we can. Now, after all these years of all this work, the movies are just still not out there. I mean, we spent eight months of the year looking in the far reaching corners of the bizarre internet to find what we can find. So if those films are out there, we will find them. And since we have realized that there is just such a lack of those films, we have some new initiatives that we're launching this year. And we're going to be announcing more about this at the festival this year, but I'm just going to bring it up now since we're on this great topic. Yeah. But, um, we're launching a new high vis film festival that we are collaborating with the bike mayor of New York City, Courtney Williams, the Brown Bike Girl Consulting. She is partnering with us to co-produce a film festival sharing and celebrating the stories of Black, Indigenous, and all people of color, both from our archives and then some new films. And that's going to be a really cool celebration in October. And that is going to help kick off a new grant program that we've put together where we will be awarding cash grants to emerging filmmakers who are Black, Indigenous, or people of color to tell those stories, to share their bicycle stories. Because we know that there are many barriers to finalizing a film, to making a film. Cash is definitely one of them. So having this grant program is going to be a really cool way for us to do our tiny part to help get some more of those stories to the screen and just create awareness for the need for more stories from Black, Indigenous, and people of color to help them tell those stories and bring those stories to the screen. Um, we're starting small. This is our first year launching this grant program. It was on our list of things to do years from now, but we realize that now is the time. So it's going to be crowdfunded. We're encouraging people to make donations. We'll have a page up on our website. And depending on how many crowdsourced donations we get, that's going to help us give out more grants. So we're super excited about that to do our part and hopefully set an example to other folks in the bicycle industry and in the bicycle culture of things they might be able to do to help uplift the black indigenous and all people of color who love riding bikes. That's really fantastic. I'm so excited to, to hear about that. And, you know, uh, it's something that I, it's something I need to do a better job on this show. And I've sort of, um, there's the old Irish proverb where, you know, you throw your hat over the wall. So you have to climb over the wall to get your hat. That's sort of what I do every, when, I, when I raise issues like this, because I know I need to do more, too. So let's pivot, um, nice transition there, uh, to bike touring, bike packing, and that kind of content. What's been the history of films with that kind of content, that niche in Film by Bike? And what's what's on the tap for 2020, if you don't mind previewing, if there's if there's any good bike touring, bike packy kind of content there? Yeah, well, I love that you bring that up because like we're already a niche film festival, but I'm telling you within our niche film festival, we see micro niches. And when we first started, it was things like mountain bike videos where there'd be a zip line along the trail where a camera would go down the zip line and follow the cyclist to get a sense of that cool feeling of going down some single track. That was the hot thing in the early 2000s. And then it moved to sort of street riding, trick riding, fixie tricks and that sort of thing. Um, We've gone through some different phases over the years, but certainly in the last few years, the big prominent thing has been stories about bike travel in general, especially bike packing. So that's been really neat because in conjunction, we're seeing a rise in people understanding that in order to share their journey, they really need to tell a great story. It's not good enough just to document your trip, but tell us the story behind that. People want that story and that's what makes a great movie and that's what gets past our jury and gets onto the screen at Film by Bike. So um, we have seen some great movies over the last few years. We've had the opportunity to meet some amazing filmmakers who have come to town to share their journey with us and tell us what it was really like out there on the rugged road. And some of my favorites have been from a filmmaker out of Colorado, Joey Schusler. He is a badass rider, a beautiful filmmaker. Somehow he's going out to like these super rugged remote areas where bicyclists have never gone 
And he's not only riding, but he's capturing these beautiful journeys and bringing probably really expensive equipment along with him. So it just blows my mind. Like you're not just a great cyclist. You're not just a great filmmaker. Like you're doing all of this and struggling through the elements and limited resources. And then somehow pulling out a beer for your final shot. Like (laughs) who carried that beer that whole way? So I just love it. I just love his films. He's a longtime filmmaker with Film by Bike. We're, We're always happy to share his stories. And we do have one in the festival this year. Um, we're probably one of the most exciting films that we're showing this year in the bikepacking realm in general is a film from Rugal Kaladite, who did a story of Leo Wilcox riding Tour Divide in 2019. And this was produced in conjunction with Pearl Izumi. Um, we're going to be talking with Rugal uh, later this week on our filmmaker Q&As. And I'm really excited to hear from her what that adventure was like as a filmmaker traveling along this really arduous journey. Um, It was an all-star lineup of racers that year in the race. Uh, Leo was going back to the second year. She had already won in the women's category and she was going for overall winner. She was up against a huge lineup of all-star racers. There was an unexpected snowstorm. No one saw that coming. And then on top of it, She faced extreme discrimination from the race officials related to her filmmaking crew being along for the ride. And I don't want to give out too much of the story there. I don't want to spoil the movie because we specialize in shorts. So the more I tell you, uh, the movie's over. Um, But it is an incredible story of resilience. um, And really, ultimately, Lael just... She just loves to ride. She's such a a beautiful person, beautiful soul, pure love of cycling, no ego in the game. And um, it's a really beautiful tale following her journey and resilience along Tour Divide in 2019. So uh, it's always fun to follow along, you know, both Rue, the filmmaker, and Lael, they're they're hot on social media. It's neat to follow along their journeys in general. And this film is really just a great showcase of one of the experiences. Uh, I find it really fun to just sit back and relax and watch these films that showcase strong riders and gives me some, you know, it's aspirational, like maybe one day, I know I'll never be that, but it gets our viewers excited to at least try doing more than what they're used to doing in their biking routine. That's amazing. I, I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, I think I'm on record on this podcast as being a fan of Lael Wilcox. And then I had this strange bit of happenstance where I interviewed uh, several women who applied for but did not win her um, Alaska. Uh, uh, I guess it was a it, it, it was a sti- not a stipend, but it was like a kind of a uh, she'll fund your ride across Alaska. I ended up interviewing independently two or three different women who had applied for that but did not get it. But they still wow. went to Alaska and did it. So. Oh, she, she's cool. been such a great inspiration for so many people, but particularly for, I think, for women who um, look at what she does and goes, go, hey, I, I think I want to try that, too. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So I'm looking forward to that film. Um, the uh, when this podcast is released, it is the first day of the festival, September 10th. But it's it's so many folks download the show in the morning. You still have a chance to get tickets for the weekend um, and all of the wonderful festivities. Um, tell folks uh, what to expect and uh, how it's going to work and where they can sign up for things. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about how we are usually an in-person film festival every year here in Portland, Oregon. But the total silver, silver, magnified silver lining of all of this is that now, no matter where you live, you get to experience our signature annual film festival that usually only occurs in Portland. So it's a cool opportunity for our filmmakers to finally attend the festival, for their friends and family to see their films in the festival, and for bike fans all over the world to tune in to Film by Bike. I'm so excited about that aspect of the festival. We already have ticket sales from all over the world and only a handful from Portland because they know they'll just get them at the last minute because that's what Portlanders do, um, you know. But the other cool thing is that we, we are live streaming on YouTube for every program within the festival. That means there is a chat window where people can be chatting about the movies, talking about where they live, asking questions. And all that happens live, but also those shows are archived. So if you buy a festival pass, you can watch all the films, all the events, all the filmmaker Q&As, and you can either do that live and tune in and join the chat, 
or you can watch later at your own convenience. You can also rewatch, rewind. So that's kind of a neat feature as well that wouldn't usually occur. Um, you can talk in the theater. It's totally encouraged because it's a <laughs> chat window. So, hey, how about that? I mean, I am a movie talker. I'm just going to admit it. I love to whisper about, oh my gosh, is that really happening? Um, and now no one's going to shush you because it is actually encouraged to chat during the movies, during our live stream events. So we're kicking things off, like you said, on the 10th uh, today as this is being aired. And that is our uh, happy hour. It's a chance to hear from our jury on what they've seen over the years, what you can look forward to this year. And then we have two movie programs every night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And on Saturday, we also have a filmmaking workshop, a one-on-one -on, -one on low budge filmmaking, great for cyclists. And this is being coordinated by Courtney Williams, the bike mayor of New York City a film by bike juror and the head of Brown Bike Girl Consulting. She's been a great ally to the festival. We do a lot of projects together. So that's going to be a neat new feature to take an online workshop on filmmaking. Um, the programs every day are different. It's all new movies for 2020 and each program has a different theme to it. So you can see the schedule on our website and kind of go through and pick and choose what you want. But the easiest way is just to get that festival pass, which gives you access to everything. I am a planner. I, I have purchased my my pass. I am so excited oh, because, <laughs> as I said, I, you know, my maze are usually kind of rough to, to get out there in, during it, that time. So I've never been able to get out there. I've been super jealous. Uh, folks who listen to the show know that uh, Guthrie Straw was involved with a uh, 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 film by bike for a while. So I always heard about all the films through through him and it always sounded like a great event. Now, I finally get to come and enjoy all of this. So, uh, and I'm particularly excited about Lil Wilcox, the Lil Wilcox film. And I think now this uh, filmmaker uh, idea, because uh, I definitely make films on a budget when I do it. And it's, uh, I need a lot of help as anybody who's seen my YouTube channel knows. So um, any kind of last thoughts on, on this year or the festival or anything else you'd like folks to know? Yeah, well, you know, it's been such an interesting year. And when when the world is in turmoil, the global bike community stands united. And that has been the mantra of us here at Film by Bike, as well as the Social Distance Cycling Club, which is a club on Facebook that formed in the wake of the pandemic and quarantine. It has grown to 7,200 plus members representing about 26 countries as far reaching as Sri Lanka. And, and it's people all over the world talking about, this is what I did today on my bike. And it's really just that simple, but I get chills just talking about it because this ability for us to connect as a global culture has been so powerful and amazing. And if we can't look at the silver linings to quarantine and COVID-19, I just have no hope for the future. So I like to look at the silver linings. Um, we're really tapped in with the Social Distance Cycling Club. They're doing a lot of, the, you know, why they exist is a lot of the reason we exist, which is to unite the global bike community. We're here to provide some entertainment, some solace, and just some really great movies from some incredible filmmakers. So while we were forced to go online this year, we do hope to be back in the theater next year, but we are going to always continue a series of online events because we've seen the great success in doing this and the great ability to connect with our fans and filmmakers all over the world. So what a cool opportunity this has all turned into for us. It really spurred us into action and we've been so pleased with the results and we have just loved meeting all these people from all over the world who love biking just as much as we do. Well, while I would have loved to have been at the Hollywood Theater for this, I am super excited to join online and be a part of all of this. You can too. Go to filmbybike.org. Aileen Crotty, thanks so much for joining us on Pedal Shift. Thanks for having me. I want to thank Aileen once again for being on the show. You can check out all of the information on this year's festival at filmedbybike.org. Do yourself a favor, grab tickets and check out these films. I'm really excited to be a part of it for the first time this year and to uh, just consume massive amounts of bike film goodness. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community, expanding into live shows and covering new tours like the Kessel Run. If you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot in annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, 
Check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society onto the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skado, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgadis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Stuart Buchan, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robert, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Henkel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Avilas Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Dan Gebhardt, Jody Zoranin, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Biggle, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Goffman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Tom Bilch, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, Ari Messinger, David Grotke, Wally Estrella, Sue Reinert, John Letko, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCulloch, John Hickman, Jack Smith, Carl Presseau, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, Timothy Fitzpatrick, Dave Fletcher, James Stratakis, David Neves, Mike Lazuski, and thanks also to all past and anonymous members for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available. 